So this is the B-Link X2, and if you are one of those lucky enough to actually own one of these, then stay tuned, because we're going to be installing a full Linux operating system onto this device, and you're going to be blown away just how well this actually performs. I'm blown away, I'm really quite impressed by this, and I'm quite excited to show you guys Linux Ubuntu running on the B-Link X2 with the H3 or with a processor. My name's Matthew, and you're watching a video by the MXQ Project. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to go over to Ambient and grab our image file for the B-Link X2. Now just choose the H3 processor and that is the processor you've got in your B-Link X2 and you'll see a couple of different versions. The one we want is just here. We don't want the mainline version just yet. We'll probably check that out in another video because I'm quite interested to see how well that performs and the sort of features that that one's got. But anyway, download the image file, burn it onto an SD card using maybe Win32 Disk Imager or Etcher or something like that. And the next thing we need to do is simply take that micro SD card, stick it in our B-Link X2 and apply power. And that's all you got to do guys there will be a set of procedure but that will be displayed on screen and you can follow that very very easily next thing we need to do is we're going to be showing you the performance of linux ubuntu running on the b-link x2 and this is the actual home page this is the desktop of the ubuntu running on the b-link x2 and general performance is absolutely phenomenal now there is a myriad of different Wi-Fi chipsets found in the B-Link X2, so hopefully you've got the right one and it supports it. Otherwise you might be stuck with Ethernet um, and that should absolutely work absolutely fine. Your USB ports, etc., should all work. And overall general performance from this is absolutely phenomenal compared to the previous version, which we looked at about six months ago now. So this is really, really impressive. So big thumbs up and all credit goes to Ambient for this. It's absolutely spot on this. I really, really love it. Really, really well impressed. And it's such an old piece of hardware as well. It just goes to show you what can be actually, actually achieved on old hardware. Now we went through a few things. So internet browsing, for example, it's got this Chromium already pre-built into it. And again, I would be absolutely happy just to use this as simple web browsing, Facebook, YouTube, and just, you know, simple search around Google for whatever you need. And yeah, absolutely no issues at all. It's not amazingly fast. You know, we're not talking desktop sort of speeds, but as general everyday performance, absolutely no complaints at all really a massive step up over what we were actually running just a couple of months ago on the older version of Ambient for the B-Link X2. Now I did actually manage to get a couple of games run on this and this wasn't possible I don't think last time and we did actually try and run them and it just wasn't working properly uh, just off the top of my head at least and yeah a couple of emulation emulated games I've got this Nesrom going and yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's absolutely great. I love it. Absolutely brilliant. Now, we actually installed a game off the actual Ubuntu store, and yeah, it's not running very good. It's 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 not it's not performing very well at all. And you know, that's just the way it is. I mean, that's built for much faster hardware. Um, so not too fussed about that. So we also managed to install Kodi. Now the last time we tried this operating system on this device, it installed but it didn't work. There was a major graphical issues, but now Kodi runs amazing. It runs really spot on. All you gotta do is remember that you've got to switch over your audio to HDMI. If that's the same actually within the desktop as well. So when you first launch it, you need to switch it over to HDMI if you are using a HDMI TV, for example. And that's very simple, it's very straightforward. And just remember to do that in Kodi so it enables the sound. Otherwise, you won't get any sound. But as you can see, this is a couple of videos off our YouTube channel. Just running on Kodi. This is actually 15.2. I've not got around to actually installing the latest version of Kodi. But as you can see, Kodi is running really, really well. Really quite impressed. And this is on top of the Linux operating system running off an SD card. So as you can see, it's... Wow. Uh, again, I'm blown away by this. This is really, really good, especially for this piece of hardware, which is nearly three years old now, and it was so cheap back in the day. We also managed to get our Word running on it, so we've got LibreOffice running. It's already pre-installed on the operating system, Ubuntu, and yeah, again, I'm writing this out, and it's nice and smooth, a lot better, actually, over the previous 
previous version, it's running a lot smoother, there's a lot less lag, and it just loads up and you can just get on with writing documents, and I'd be actually quite confident to use this, just as a simple word, um, editor, and, and so on. So as well as that, we can customize the desktop as well. And I'm not sure if you're very familiar with Ubuntu, but again, we can customize everything you see here to exactly the way you want it, change your colors, fonts, and the way everything is positioned on screen. Obviously you can do that on most Linux versions of Linux anyway. Now, I've got to say a few things as well before I carry on. This is not perfect. We did come across a few lagging issues and stuff like that it's not perfect i wouldn't expect it to be perfect anyway but there we go now a really good uh, feature is you can actually install the ubuntu software center it does come with like ambient zone version of software center and that's absolutely fine but you can install the full ubuntu software center on this and it runs really nicely and i've installed a couple of applications off that ubuntu software center and yeah absolutely great it's absolutely brilliant. I really, I'd really do recommend trying this out if you do have an X2 or actually any hardware which is supported by Ambient because they support a myriad of different pieces of hardware from Amlogic to All Winner. Rock, there's a few rock chip devices in there supported, lots of development boards, I know the Odroid and stuff like that are all supported and I do recommend going over there and if you can, you know, go and donate to them. These guys are so much work and effort must go into these operating systems i can't even begin to imagine but yeah if you can go and support them in any way you can because these guys are brilliant and as you can see this is a blink x2 running a fully fledged fully functioning ubuntu 16.04 and it's fantastic so all credit to Arbion. anyway guys i think that pretty much concludes this video i think i'm rambling on maybe a little bit too much and yeah if you've got any questions, um, please feel free to ask them in the comment section below. I'll happily answer any you've got about specifically about this. As well as that, we've got our website, themskproject.com. You can come and learn about a whole lot of different things on there. Don't forget to go and check out Ambient as well. Go and check out all their developments for um, Ubuntu and Debian for these sort of de ARM-based um, development boards and you know TV boxes and so on. And as well as that... Don't forget to come over and check us out on Twitter at MXQ Project. And yeah, my name's Matthew and you have been watching another video by the MXQ Project. And we shall see you very, very soon.